The hardware we use daily is a great reminder of how we're integrating open source into our lives, from baby monitors to household appliances and even robots. Many of the robots you see today are powered by the robot operating system, which is completely open source. This powers hundreds of different types of robots, from your vacuum cleaner, one of my favorite gadgets, who hasn't watched the map to figure out where it's going to go next, to NASA's Robot 2, Robonaut 2, sorry, a humanoid robot built to help our astronauts work and explore in space. When you start to have robots interacting with humans, you need vision systems to interact and detect where robots can safely operate. MoveIt is an open source library for robot OS that sits between the cameras and the motors that power the robot. Companies like Picnic are shaping the future of this very thing, building and helping to maintain MoveIt and robot OS. Let me introduce Dave Coleman, CEO of Picnic, to show us more. Please join me in welcoming Dave to the stage. <laughs> Hey, Dave, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Super exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you're doing. Yeah. So we know you're the CEO of Picnic. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got there? Like... Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so it actually started when I was like middle school, and I saw Star Wars. I heard that reference a few times already. Uh, I wasn't into lightsabers or the Force. I loved the droids. And I decided oh. then, at a young age, that this would be my career. And you know, I was kind of dormant for a while, but I was then in grad school, working my PhD. And I did an internship uh, here in the Bay Area at a place called Willow Garage that had a dramatic impact on the robotics industry because they were so into open source. They spun out a bunch of different projects, uh, particularly uh, Ross, like you mentioned, and MoveIt. And so I, I was there, and I've been involved with uh, MoveIt ever since. And so Ross is like the, uh, the, the middleware that connects and makes robots compatible all over the world. So it's like all, all the companies use it. And, and MoveIt's like the killer app. I, I, that's maybe that's we, do, we don't want robots that kill people. It's the most popular app <laughs> in this ecosystem for making robot arms uh, usable in our everyday lives. Um, and, and so this, the, the applications and industries it's been work, uh, used in is, is incredible from uh, you know, unloading boxes and trucks, is, trucks, subsea infrastructure maintenance, uh, fast food robots that are you know, changing the way we do kitchens. Uh, and one that I really particularly love is here in California, there's robots running open source software outdoors in strawberry fields, picking strawberries. Fresh robot pick berries are delicious. They, they don't like squish the, ro the strawberries? Not, not usually. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, I was looking back at my emails preparing for this, and I saw like, the email from 2012 when uh, someone emailed saying, hey, we're switching to this cool thing called GitHub. So it's, it's oh, been around awesome. for a long time, and it's been cool to be part of that community. Very cool. And you told me you were going to introduce me to a friend while we're here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So over here, we have uh, Hal, the uh, six-axis robot arm. Say <laughs> hi to the audience, Hal. Um, this is, uh, you know, typically we've seen robots like this used in factory settings. Hi, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we're working on making robots be doing way more than what we can do in factories. So how like, sees us. It, it sees us, exactly, yeah. So, uh, it takes depth sensors, kind of like we see in the self-driving car industry, to uh, see the world and create like an artificial representation internally that it understands and can then automatically plan um, based on what it sees. Whereas traditional robots, they're just doing the same rote thing over and over again. They're, they're not very flexible. We want this to work in uh, unstructured environments, we call it. So this is kind of uh, things that are changing. I could jump in front of it and it could adapt, right? And we do that using a lot of sophisticated algorithms. Um, through, through MoveIt? Through, through MoveIt, yeah, the open source software. Uh, the, the, the research community has been really big into this. There's been like almost 1,000 publications using, of researchers using MoveIt uh, for their work. Um, and so uh, one of the key things, so we, we use like inverse kinematics, uh, computer vision to understand the world, but also uh, the search space for planning an arm is infinitely large. It turns out that the number of configurations in continuous space is enormous. And so if we want to plan around obstacles, we actually have to discretize the world, but also use a thing called like probabilistic sampling-based motion planning. And uh, it's a, so, so you're trying to figure out like the possibility that there might be something there? Yeah, it's, you're kind of guessing, guessing and checking. And it, it turns out to be a really uh, great way to do this. We've been using it. The, the academic community, we've been working on this for the past couple decades. And it's basically rolling a dice really fast and just hoping that it finds the solution. So, uh, on top of that, we're applying um, more machine learning methods for picking up arbitrary objects, um, even downright quacky ones. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah, thank you, Hal. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. 
And he didn't squish the ducky. Yeah, ducky. No strawberry or ducky <laughs> squished snake. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Hal. Um, so can you tell us if, if people wanted to get involved with the open source software project, how they would do that? Yeah. So uh, you know, we have a website, muwit.ross.org, uh, a vibrant community online. Um, and that community is something I'd love to chat about. Please. Uh, so you know, this, the company that originally started this, and I was involved in it long ago, shut down, like 2013. But the industry and research organizations and group all over the world have continued its growth, maintaining it, adding new features. And so Picnic Robotics has been, uh, the company I represent, has been really involved in leading that. We, we do that through hosting um, international hackathons, cool. uh, keeping tutorials and documentation super important to be up to date, workshops at conferences, uh, as well as even, uh, we have this software called the Setup Assistant. It takes a CAD of your robot, so any, when you support any kind of robot, you can quickly set up your robot to then run using Move It and ROS, which is something really powerful. And then how do you think like open source and robots like how like how are they how are they changing the industry? Yeah. Uh, I love or the that world. Question. Like I, I actually think it's they're changing the world, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean I think it's just it's been incredible. The the impact that Move It has had on the industry and, and Ross and the, the speeding up that we see of the adoption. So huge tech companies use our software. Uh, Amazon, Google, Facebook, startups everywhere are, are making these uh, you know, big technological advances by building on top of this, raising all this money, medium-sized businesses. One thing that's particularly uh, you know, important to me is its usage on the International Space Station. And, you, know, you had a slide earlier yeah, about that. That's um, really cool. Yeah, like Picnic, where we're bringing more and more open source robotic software to the future space missions, to the future space stations that are you know, being launched this decade. And I, I just, being the Star Wars geek that I, I came as, like, I think that's so cool. And it just gets me really stoked. Um, but I, you know, our mission's way bigger than these big logos I just named. Um, I, I really believe that robotics is, is going to have this huge, huge impact in this decade on our lives. It's been, it started since the Industrial Revolution, but uh, it's continuing on now. And the, the impact on the abundance, the economic abundance it can bring to us to make our lives better is, is profound. And it does that through basically making society more efficient so that we can make goods cheaper and have more interesting, less mundane jobs, right? So like my robot vacuum cleaner cleans my floors so that I can spend more time on open source software. Exactly, yep. <laughs> I love my vacuum cleaner too. Um, and, and so the, the key though is that there's a lot of power in this economic abundance we're creating. And how do we uh, make it so that not just a few big companies have access to the, this world changing thing, but to like, how can we democratize that? And clearly, like open source is the way we're doing that. So, like that's to me really, really important that uh, that the software we're developing, Move It, is is made by people for people um, to make kind of uh, to make the robotics abundance that we have in front of us accessible in the next decade. Yeah, and and people around the world can adapt it to their needs. So, like it might pick strawberries in California and peaches in Colorado, or. All, countries all over the world are using this. Yeah. So yeah, Very cool. I encourage you to you know, go to our website. There's a big Get Involved button. Talks about how to contribute at different levels based on your skill set. We try to make sure beginners can use it as well as like, uh, experts. Cool. Well, thanks very much, Dave. Yeah. That is awesome. Thanks, Hal. Thanks for having <laughs> me. So to learn more, visit moveit.ross.org. Good night, Hal.